Sinestra. It's time for my first redo video, and I want to redo my video for Final Fight. It was one of the very first videos I made when I started almost two and a half years ago, and I want to take a look at it again for several reasons. Number one, I had no idea what I was doing yet. Number two, I only talked about the first game and not the two sequels. Number three, I love Final Fight, and number four, this series, the first game in particular, is one of the hardest for me to look at objectively, because the first game is one of the first games I ever own, so I have an easy incentive to like this game a lot. People like to rag on the Final Final Fight Super Nintendo port, and I understand why, but I don't think it's a bad port, just a very limited one. I should let you know though, there's a few major things you should know about the Super Nintendo version of Final Fight. There can only be three enemies on screen at once, they left out a playable character, Guy, they left out the fourth level entirely, and they left out the multiplayer feature. So if any of those aspects are deal breakers for you, then there you go. Capcom tried to fix this years later by releasing Final Fight Guy, which is exclusive to Blockbuster video stores, but they just replaced Cody with Guy, and the rest of the game is the same. Well, whatever, at least they tried. Notice though that the four things I mentioned there are just limitations. They're just things they had to leave out. The graphics and the actual gameplay are still really well done. So yeah, despite no multiplayer, no guy, a limited number of enemies, and a shorter game, I still think Final Fight is worth playing today because the core beat-em-up gameplay here is so well done. The hit detection is great, the variety of moves are kept intact, and there's big, huge, detailed, colorful sprites, especially the bosses who just look fantastic. And the sound design here is just amazing. In my earlier video, I talked about how every beat-em-up needs a hook of some sort, because beat-em-ups are very repetitive, obviously, so to keep them from getting boring, you gotta get people addicted to doing the same thing over and over. Final Fight's hook is the extremely satisfying sound of kicking someone's ass. And yes, I'm going to make the same comparison I made in my earlier video, because I think it's an important point. Listen to what it sounds like here. Now in the game Legends. Now in Brawl Brothers. Now in Pirates of the Dark Water. And now and even in Final Fight 3, and back to Final Fight. It's just that extra kick that makes this game so satisfying to play. And it's not just beating people up, you also beat the crap out of this car with your bare fists. Oh my God. Now that's funny. So yeah, despite its limitations, I do think Final Fight is well worth playing today. If you want to play something closer to the original arcade version, there's Final Fight for Sega CD. Or there's a spruced up version for Game Boy Advance, Final Fight 1. Or if you'd like, you can simply move on to the next game in the Super Nintendo series, Final Fight 2. There's multiplayer this time around, and three characters to choose from. Hagar is back from the first game, but there's also Maki and Carlos, who in a shocking coincidence play a lot like Guy and Cody, respectively. However, I gotta mention for multiplayer, both Final Fight 2 and three, you can hit each other. Ah, <sighs> well, it's better than nothing, I guess. Sadly, the sound design here just isn't as good as the first Final Fight. It feels a little flimsy to punch someone out. It's lacking that deep crunching sound, so that's kind of a bummer. The gameplay, though, is mostly the same, although some levels scroll vertically. I do want to stress one other thing about the Final Fight series that makes it stand out among other beat-em-ups. One key aspect of being able to progress in a beat-em-up is being able to get all the enemies on one side of the screen. Each Final Fight game makes it very easy to do this. Just hit an enemy with a couple punches, press the opposite direction on the d-pad as you're throwing the third punch, and the enemy is sent in the other direction. In Final Fight 2, you can do this via suplex, toss, or a monkey flip. This is a simple thing that a lot of beat-em-ups overlook that Final Fight 1 and 2 both do really well. There's not much else to say about Final Fight 2, so I'll move on to the third game in the series. Guy is back in Final Fight 3 along with Hagar, Dean, and Lucia to make four playable characters. There's a strong emphasis on multiplayer here because not only can you play with the second player, but you can play with with the computer as your ally as well, so that's pretty cool. The gameplay here has really been spruced up. It's got your traditional Final Fight stuff in addition to being able to run, do a dash attack, and certain Street Fighter type commands can unlock a special move. You gotta love that. Overall, the gameplay here feels so much faster. Even Big Slow Hagar here can make short work of these guys, and it's commendable that despite the repetitive gameplay, the game moves along quickly. One small thing about the gameplay though, just a bit earlier I mentioned how easy it is to get every enemy on one side of the screen in the previous two games, but in Final Fight 3, it just doesn't work the same way. You have to grab the guy first, and that's kind of problematic. Granted, the hit detection here is very good, and what you'd expect from a game like this, and each character's range is pretty substantial, so it's easy to create space and not get overwhelmed by enemies on both sides, but still, I miss the fluid motion of the 1-2 punch throw or 1-2 punch suplex mechanic. But yeah, the graphics look better than ever, and the music is fantastic. All the additions to the basic gameplay, including a useful new game mode, make Final Fight 3 the best game in the series. 
So yeah, all three Final Fight games are worth playing today, and don't be scared off by the first one. Yeah, it's a bit limited, there's no multiplayer, but it's still a good beat-em-up, and the cartridge is around $5 or so. The carts for the other two games are a bit pricey, especially the third game, but if you insist on playing your beat-em-ups with another player, then those two games are the way to go.